Welcome, everyone. I'm Nick Haynes. With so much fixation on the ongoing mayor's race in Kansas City, it's sometimes good to take a break. This week we do with a man who knows all too well the promise and pitfalls of being mayor of Kansas City. Kansas Cityans know how to roll up their shirt sleeves and get to work. They want a mayor who will do the same thing. I'm a former auditor and a finance professor. As the global economy continues to falter, who else is more qualified to lead this city? You elected him mayor in 2007. Mark Funkhauser is with us. He is now publisher of Governing Magazine in Washington, D.C., the go-to publication for tracking trends in local and state government. And with him is former First Lady Gloria Squitiro, who is back in town with a brand new book, part of a new memoir series chronicling their relationship, the campaign, and their time in office. When you see, though, that old campaign commercial, does that make you feel, ah, oh, wistful of those times? Or do you still feel some pain and angst and turmoil about those days, Gloria? Both, absolutely. But mostly seeing that commercial, I forgot about that commercial. It was so good. That was after we finally got some money rolling into the campaign <laughs> and, could, and can have something professional done. You know, I was looking through the book, and it is an amazing book. It's called May Cause Drowsiness and Blurred Vision. I'm not talking about the blurred vision, because to me there was a lot of eye-popping uh, aspects to this book that I loved, including the back cover that says they can throw her out, but they can't sh uh, shut her up. She has the rare distinction of being the only first lady in America legally banned from City Hall. That's a great seduction to get you into this book. Um, so do you feel differently about that today than you did then? And do you better understand uh, why that happened? why getting banned happened. Um, I understand with my head, like, but not with my heart. Um, with my head, I understand that it was about money and, and power, and Funk was shaking that money and power up, and I was an easy target. Um, but, yeah, I would still today do it all over again, because I don't think a lot of people get an opportunity to do a whole lot of good for a whole lot of people. And that was a wonderful opportunity. In the book, you say in 2011, Funk was blacklisted in Kansas City after the election and were forced to leave the home where we raised our children and, more, uh, and, and then moved to Washington, D.C. Did you feel you had a choice after losing that election, which is really now eight years ago this very month? Oh. No, I, I mean, uh, blacklisted? I couldn't find a job here. Absolutely, uh, the kind you know, and I had thought that I would. Uh, well, you had several jobs, and then they disappeared. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, people, and so, so yeah. I mean, I had to leave, and 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 I was very uh, fortunate uh, to land at governing, and you know, it was yeah, it's a national platform to talk about what I want to talk about, and so I'm 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 happy with it. Uh, I was darn upset to lose the re-election. Uh, and you know, looking at that campaign commercial, I'm reminded of how much fun the campaign was. Being mayor was hard work, and the campaign was hard work, but it was fun. You say in the book that uh, you knew very little about politics, cared very little about politics, but you thought your husband was going to make a, quote, kick-ass mayor. Did you yeah. think he was a kick-ass mayor? I think he he accomplished what he set out to accomplish. His biggest goals, saving the city financially, reducing the crime, I think he did a fantastic job. Had he listened to me and my Italian roots, what my <laughs> intuition was telling me, that he needed to fight fire with fire, hire Steve Glorioso, he wouldn't listen. Everybody thinks Funk listens to my every, every word. So this guy doesn't listen to nothing. And I think had we hired Steve Glorioso and gotten in the mud the way, you know, the rest were getting in the mud, I think Funk would have still been mayor. Would you have changed anything, man? Oh, I think she's right. I don't know whether Steve was the right person, but, but I yeah. had hired um, good people who I knew and who I liked, none of whom had experience with really cutthroat politics. And that's what the mayor's office is in Kansas City, and really, I, from my you know, vantage point in governing, it's true everywhere. Uh, and so Gloria always, uh, you know, points out to me how often in our 40 years or so together that I've said, well, yeah, you were right. And yes, she was right about that. 
you have in the book here, it is my calling, Gloria, to make every husband on earth feel grateful they're not married to me. Yes. So you appreciate the fact that you might not always be the easiest person. I am so not easy. The <laughs> only reason I'm with this guy is because he's the only one that thinks he found a prize in me. Now, when I, I spoke to some of your advisors who had worked very closely with your administration after your election and when you lost that election, what, what was the greatest accomplishment? They at that time said it was you removing the metal plates from all of the roads all over Kansas City. Do you view that as your biggest accomplishment? Well, I took a picture yesterday of metal plates on the road here. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, they're back. Um, but... If you take a look at the uh, 2019 budget for the city of Kansas City, Missouri, and their business plan for the city, and they've got a, 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 an elaborate, nice business plan, five-year plan, all the policies that we were able to put in place that were not in place when I took office, that we were able to put in place are there now and they're working. My fingerprints are all over the financial pic picture. Uh, there, uh, when, when Kay Barnes was in office, she had tripled the city's debt load from 500 million to a billion and a half. Uh, we held the, the line on debt. Uh, she left a fund balance of about 10 cents. Uh, th today, the fund balance is 17%. That's really good, that's really strong. Every former mayor of Kansas City now has something named after them. Kay Barnes has the ballroom <laughs> at the convention center. Emmanuel Cleaver, his boulevard. Charlie Wheeler, the downtown uh, airport. Dick Berkeley, the park by the riverfront. Yet nothing was named for you. Does that stick in your craw today? Well, that was the plan. Kansas City is run by the BS party, the build <laughs> okay. something party. Everybody, you know, we don't need to build, we need good financial management. We need to focus on crime, those sorts of things. But the everyday life of the people who live here. Does that bother you, Gloria? Uh, there is one thing <laughs> named after him, and it's because I forced it. Um, it's a little plaque over on the east side that I demanded his name be put on there. There were council member names there, but no mayor. Um, so he's got one, but no, Funk was not in it, you know, for the glory of the mayor title. You know, he wasn't in it for to be a cheerleader for the city. He was in it to fix the city, and I think he did a really great job of fixing the city. Now, we are in the middle of a major mayoral campaign, and people are getting fed up of it, hearing about it every single week on this program. Yeah. But Jody Justice and Quinton Lucas, have one of them will have one foot in the door that you held for so long. Um, what advice do you give them uh, as they enter City Hall? Well, I don't know anything about politics normally. I was only, you know, aware because of funk. And I don't know about local politics here enough to say anything. Uh, so I don't know if they're part of the establishment, not part of the establishment. But if they weren't part of the establishment, like Funk, well, Jolie Justice is. But I don't know Quentin Lucas. But if he's not part of the establishment, if, if he's populist like Funk was, he needs to play it really smart when all that negativity comes through and, and be smart about that. You can't wear the white hat in your first term. You can wear the white hat in your second term. Do you have that in the book? Politics is ugly, especially if you're the guy wearing the white hat. So she believes you were the guy wearing the white hat. What advice do you give to Jolie Justice and Quentin Lucas? Well, uh, one of the, I mean, I was, despite the fact that I worked directly for elected officials for almost 30 years, and I thought I knew the game, yeah. I was naive. I had no idea how mean and vicious and nasty it is. And so my first piece of advice is take care of the people that you're close to. You know, a whole lot of mayors and governors and folks like that wind up uh, destroying their relationship with their children, with their spouse. Uh, and you, when, when the substance hits a fan, you know, pay attention to the people you love. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is there will be a recession in the new mayor's term. I mean, there's no question about it. And that's going to be tough. Uh, and so, you know, I would, I would say focus on the finances and get ready. Are you happier today than you were when you were mayor? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, no, you, You're not. disputing that. No, that was, he loved doing that. It, it, it was hard. The, the mayor's thing is all consuming all the time. It's in your face. And it was the hardest thing we've ever done. But 
he's always happy. He doesn't look happy. Look at him. <laughs> like <laughs> He's the same as he was eight years ago. I said that. He looks the same. He has the same demeanor. But he's... he's Stern and unyielding looking, but he's actually a very happy man. Why wouldn't How he? about you? Are you happier now than you were then? You know what? Um, I am so much stronger mm -hmm. now than I was then, and I'm really grateful for that. And I'm really grateful for Kansas City for making me a strong woman, because I think we need strong women today, now well, the, more than ever. The book is called May Cause Drowsiness and Blurred Vision. You can join the mayor and former First Lady Gloria Squitero at Barnes & Noble at Town Center Plaza in Leewood from 1 to 4 this Saturday. They'll also be hosting a book launch party at 7 at the Westport Flea Market. Details of both events at Gloria's website, GloriaSquitero.com. Former Kansas City, Missouri Mayor Mark Funkhauser and former First Lady Gloria Squitero Thank you for joining us on Week in Review. Thank, Thank you. you.